Let's take a look at how to export an ODB++ manufacturing file from your Mentor Graphics Expedition layout tool. I will be using version 7.9.5, but this tutorial should provide enough insight to successfully navigate and export an ODB++ file for all versions. After completing your PCB layout and getting your approvals, it's time to hand off the manufacturing data to your vendors. Although the copper in the design might be finalized and ready to release, but please note some final processing should be completed in the Expedition Layout tool prior to export. It's important that you process your NC drill and silkscreen data to ensure your ODB++ file contains all of the latest information. These additional processes can be found under the same output pull-down menu as the ODB++ export option. Invoking the ODB++ output dialog from the pull-down menu will allow us to configure what data gets exported from our PCB layout database. Since the ODB++ will represent the entire input package for manufacturing the board, it's important to have a good understanding of the ODB++ export options, so you can always provide the right data the first time. Let's take a close look at the available options. Starting at the top, we can select any predefined ODB++ setup schemes, or choose to save our own export settings for future use in both this design and any other upcoming projects, a common feature found throughout Expedition. We can also easily define any output path or file name if the default doesn't meet our need. If you use variant data for different component load options, this data can be included in your ODB++ by enabling the options given here. You can also define where the log files are stored and if you'd like your results appended each time. Moving on to the basic export options, these will allow you to control what features and what level of intelligence will be embedded into your ODB++ output. Enabling the Remove EDA data will have the biggest impact since it removes all netlist, component, and package information from your output file. Enabling Remove CADNET netlist actually removes the nodal connectivity from the ODB++ output, but will preserve the assigned net name. For example, if you select a trace feature, it will give you a net name of plus 5 volts, but you cannot check for shorts or broken nets because it no longer understands the connectivity, like U10 pin 1 connects to R20 pin 2. Enabling neutralized nets maintains the nodal connectivity, but reassigns all original schematic net names with a generic ODB net name. This will help offer a certain level of intellectual protection for your design. Enabling generated silkscreen data will export the data created by the silkscreen generator which has been clipped from any exposed copper, or if unchecked, it will export the component outline and reference designator as is without any clippings. Enabling part numbers adds the PDB part number to the assembly top and bottom documentation layer along with the reference designator and component outline. If unchecked, this information is still available under the Components Property dialog, it's just not visible on the documentation layer. Moving on to additional parameters, Enabling Board Outline allows the profile to be added as a documentation layer in the ODB++ output. This can be a helpful reference for some manufacturing operations. If Panel Outline data is present in your PCB layout, this option should be enabled. Enabling round corners will create a surface fill similar to a shape created using the common draw fill method. Enabling ignore component layout will exclude the mount type property of a device, such as surface mount or through mount. Enable advanced packaging data for advanced features in your layout like bond wires, die pins, or cavity data. The pins, pads, vias, and package option gives us the ability to remove non-functional pads for pins and vias and determines which PCB layout layer is to be used for the overall outline of your component packages. Please note a non-functional pad is any isolated pad on an internal layer. The layer mapping section will allow you to define which layers of your design are to be included in the export of your ODB++ output. The layers have been grouped into four main categories. Fab, assembly, DRC, and user layers. Some handy category checkboxes will allow you to enable or disable an entire category so you can quickly alter the contents of your ODB++ file. 
This gives you the ability to create outputs specific to each manufacturing process, such as an ODB++ output for only the bare board fabrication, and then additionally create an ODB++ with just information needed for the assembly process. Separating the files like this offers a layer of security so that not all of your data is included in one data package. This strategy will ultimately be defined by your company's policy, but the industry's common practice is to include a full comprehensive output that will support the entire build process from beginning to end with just one file. The more information you can provide will only increase your vendor's ability to make better choices that result in your design being a success every time. Reviewing the layer mapping more closely, it shows us the source PCB layout layer name, its mapped ODB++ layer name, and any additional mapped layers for user layers such as fab and assembly documentation, via capping, or any additional artwork you wish to add to any specific layer. Let's take a look at the available layers in this design, although most are easy to recognize. The fab category begins with D underscore 1 underscore 14, representing the drills that penetrate from layers 1 to 14 in this 14 layer board. In this example, I've included some blind and buried VS bands to showcase how it might look for a more advanced HDI layout. In addition to the drills, we see other files common to the fab build process, like solder mass, silk screen, and all 14 copper layers. The drill charts for the through holes is included in this category, but the additional charts for the other blind and buried VS bands will have to be added in the user layers category below. The assembly category offers component drawings of the top and bottom side, along with solder paste definitions. DRC layers can be added for additional checking of the board, but often are not used since this is done in the PCB layout. The user layers give you the ability to add all sorts of additional data to your ODB++ output. You can map any of your expedition layers to any ODB++ layer, or even create your own new ODB++ layer where you can combine layers to make things like a fab or assembly drawing. Let's take a look at a common ODB++ output setup for most users. It's important that you include enough info to get the job done right, but not to overcrowd it with too much unwanted data that can slow down the process. Starting out, we prefer to use our improved generated silkscreen data and to remove non-functional pin and via pads. The placement outline layer is often the best choice for your package outline layer, but may vary depending on how your footprint cells are created. Next, we include everything under the fab and assembly layer mapping, exclude DRC, and map any necessary user layers that support the build of our design like documentation drawings or the via cap data. Don't forget to include your additional blind and buried drill charts that will appear under the user layer category. The drill data is already included in the above fab layers, but these are simply the documentation drill charts to support these drill spans. Finally, define your desired units for export and select the compress output. This will create a compressed ODB++ file using the TGZ file type extension. If required, enable Launch ODB++ Inside for comparing your ODB++ to your Gerber layers using CAM Compare. This is good practice if you're going to provide both dataset types to your vendors. Now let's finish by selecting OK to export your ODB++ and then we'll move on to reviewing the contents of our output using the ODB++ Viewer.